So you might be wondering, what does ad revenue look like for a Webtoon Canvas comic? The intention of this video is not to brag or fearmonger or anything of that nature. I really just want to share my notes on what ad revenue I made and what the circumstances were around the months where I made more than I expected. Because my goal for this channel is to help you guys out on your comic making adventure. and. Sometimes, to be able to keep working on your comic, you need money to help out. In my case, most of my ad revenue goes towards babysitting so I can have more time to draw. So hopefully sharing what I learned and earned on my ad revenue can help you guys temper your expectations. Looking at you, $2.28. <laughs> also, looking at you, $2.31.16. Er, two, $2 Let's get into it. So I launched my comic Fairy Lantern back in February of 2021. At the end of the month, because it was my birthday present to myself, and I had a little boost in readers just from my previous social media and live streaming communities. So out the gate there were 146 people reading my comics prologue episode. Unfortunately, I didn't catch how many page views I had but I'm assuming it wasn't that many since it literally was only the last three days of the month. March 2021. I had a total of four episodes up, posted once a week on Monday nights, and by the end of the month my comic had 372 readers, and I remembered to document that I had 2,647 page views. At the time, Webtoon Canvas still only counted US page views and not global page views. That will play a key part in getting into the ad revenue program later on. April 2021. Total episodes 12 and 514 subscribers and roughly the same page views for that month. It was about, or it was about, it was exactly 2,882 page views. May 2021, total episodes 16, 652 total subscribers, so not as much of a jump, but the page views almost doubled at 4,636. At this point, it's good to note that I haven't really done anything special. There was no, um, no promotion or anything. I just literally have been chugging along, posting one episode a week at the same time, same place, and that's about it. Then Canvas Festival happened. July 2021. I had a total of 27 episodes out. My comics subscribers doubled at 1,779 readers, and page views shot up to 19,519. What was special here? Well, the Canvas team was encouraging readers to check out more Canvas comics, which are the indie comics on the Webtoon platform, and rewarding readers with some extra coins that they could then use to fast pass episodes on the originals side of the platform. So there was a lot of incentive for readers to go check out Canvas episodes at the time, or Canvas comics at the time. And it got even better from there. August 2021, I had a total of 32 episodes out. My comics readers doubled again at 3,721 subscribers. And cue drum roll. The month ended with 73,014 page views. A couple things happened here. Global monthly page views were now being counted in the total page views. My comic was still riding the high from the Canvas Festival the previous month, so it ended up in the Hot Series tab, which, if you're familiar with it, it puts more potential reader eyeballs on it. And then I think it might have gotten the attention of someone on the Canvas team, because soon after it wound it up on the... It wound it. It wound it because it's a carousel. It wound, it wound up on the featured carousel on the canvas tab. So yeah, just like that, I had suddenly hit the requirements for ad revenue in what basically felt like overnight, 
Granted, I don't think I would have made it if it hadn't been for the fact that I had over 30 episodes for new readers to binge at this point. So yes, I got lucky here, but if I didn't have those episodes out already, it could have easily been a missed opportunity. September 2021. So now, the first month of ad revenue. But before I talk about it, I want to show you my process of applying to be in the ad revenue program and what you can kind of expect, more or less. So, the requirements for ad revenue on Webtoon Canvas as of recording this video. So you go to your Webtoon Canvas page and in the Ad Sharing tab, it will show you the current requirements. This is also the hub for applying, and once you're in, it's also where you will see your earnings each month. So your requirements currently are as follows. You need 40,000 page views in one month, and 1,000 subscribers on your comic. The cool part is that you only have to hit this metric once. So if you're worried that the following month you won't have enough page views, don't. It, it literally doesn't matter. What does matter is if you're yeah. <laughs> what does matter is if you follow the content guidelines. No nudity, no explicit, explicit, explicit sexual content, and no gratuited. <laughs> I can't talk. I can't even say it. No nudity, no explicit, explicit sexual content. No gratuitous violence, and more. <laughs> the more part always gets me. But basically, if your comic is a good noodle, you're pretty much in. When you've hit those requirements, the black not available button turns green, and it says something like apply or ready to apply. I can't remember, it's been a while. But that's where you go to apply. Depending on how many other comics are applying at the same time as you, it might take a few days, but I remember it being pretty quick. Like, within a week after applying, I was approved. Some people have reported it taking closer to a month, but that's roughly, roughly what you can expect. Payment info. You can edit this whenever, but basically you have two options at the moment. You can get paid through PayPal, or if you have a Patreon, you can get paid through there. I chose just to go through my Patreon to make it easier for me to track. When you are in the ad revenue program, you can expect your earnings to show up in the ad sharing tab on the 21st of the following month. So let's say January is your first active month. You'll see what you earned for January on February 21st, and so on and so forth. The payment threshold is 100 US dollars. Anything under that won't trigger a payout. So that being said, if you make $102, you'll get a payout of $100 and your $2 will then roll over into the next payment. Let's say you make $215. $200 of that will be sent out to you and then the $15 will chill for the next time you get paid. $100 increments. Boom. You can also check out your payment history at the top there, and it will tell you when payouts happened and where they went. In my case, they go to my Patreon. I think I covered everything I could about the process. Let me know in the comments if you have more questions, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And if there are other Canvas creators who want to chime in about their experiences so far on the platform, I'd love to hear your journey as well. I think transparency is important to helping the art community as a whole, which is part of the reason why I wanted to make this video. Sorry it took longer than I thought to get it out, but I guess that works since I have more data to share. That being said, let's get back to the spreadsheet. September 2021, the first month with ad revenue activated. I had a total of 36 episodes out at that point. Subscriber count was at 4,522 readers and 39,936 page views. So that's why I told you not to be worried about not hitting the page view requirement again. I literally was in the same boat worrying about it. So <laughs> $11.87 was my revenue for that first month. 
It's not groundbreaking, but I was so damn proud of it. Like, look, mom, my comic is actually making money. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, October 2021, 42 total episodes, 6,008 readers, 75,787 page views, and $27.10 in revenue. Nothing extra to note there. I'm just literally chugging along, posting my comic, and that's about it. November 2021, 47 total episodes, 10,567 readers, 175,951 page views. What happened here? <laughs> Fairy Lantern got on the recommend recommended tab somewhere, and a bunch of new readers came in. And then it went back on the canvas front page carousel thing. And it hit 10k subs on November 28th. So basically a feast on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and ad revenue for that month jumped to $91.88. So yeah, feast. As far as ad revenue is concerned, that's a feast. December 2021. 51 total episodes, 10,803 subscribers. So not a big jump this time. Still a healthy amount of page views from the people who were already here reading at 66,862 page views. And ad revenue came in at $49.55. January 2022. So a not so mysterious thing happens after the major holidays are over. Ad rates tend to go down. So even though page views came in at 96,740, the comic made $44.73. So more views, but less money coming in at the time. February to April 2022, I'll just read the stats out real quick. But basically my comic plateaued at around 11,000 subs. And the page views were between 45,000 and 59,000. And the ad revenue for those three months were $19.95, $37.87, and $17.09. Weird exceptions. Then something wild happened in May. I updated my thumbnail and switched my main genre from romance to heartwarming. I'm not sure why that made a difference. It's still kind of a mystery to me, but it somehow got Fairy Lantern a spot on the canvas carousel for a week. I think because heartwarming was a much smaller category, it helped my comic be seen by more people looking in that category. Whereas being in the romance category, there's a lot more comics vying for that same attention. So since then, Webtoon has seemed to update its algorithm, so the strategy might not be as effective now, but man, it made a difference back then. 400 and 36,338 page views later, so almost half a million page views, <laughs> and almost 6,000 new readers, and the ad revenue was a grand total of $231.16 for that month. I had 78 episodes at the time, so it really gets crazy when new readers have a lot of content to read. Also, if I remember correctly, this was also the month I decided I would be going on a break to build up my buffer slash focus on working on the backgrounds. And it turned out that Canvas stuck Fairy Lantern into the Fireside Stories reading list as a part of something. I think maybe it was the Summer Canvas Festival? I can't quite remember and my dumbass forgot to write it down. So, uh... Yeah, um, now I remember. It was a major whiplash for me. I was like, all right, break time. Oh my god, what is happening? And I had left the story on a cliffhanger. So I was laugh crying at the new comments coming in because a lot of them were like, no, why'd you end it here? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <sighs> In hindsight, I wish I had been able to double down and really pick up the pace with my story. I think the momentum would have carried my comic to an even better spot than where it is now. But there was a lot of life stuff happening at the time behind the scenes, and 
I don't regret it, but it is something I want to advise you guys on. If you have the signs of good momentum like this was for me, please try your best to take it and freaking run with it, at least for another month or so if you can. <clears throat> anyway. June 2022. My comic was still riding the wave a bit from being on that reading list, I think. There was only one update for the whole month, which if I remember correctly was just a uh, collaboration with Pack Thesis. But anyways, there was only one update for the month, but new readers still came in at 20,138 subscribers. Um, page views were still high, at 177,442 page views and the ad revenue came in at about or at $66.66. A funny thing happened with that big influx of readers the previous month. Um, <laughs> Fairy Lantern became eligible for reward ads <sighs> and I was thinking this is fine. Definitely the best freaking time to go on a break. What the heckity heck. <sighs> I submitted my application and got approved soon after. Not much else to talk about with the reward ads, but it's just another way to make a little extra ad revenue. Um, with my experience with it though, it hasn't really shown me any noticeable change, but um, anyways, it rolls into your regular ad revenue and that's about it. I don't really have much data on it because I went into a hiatus right after this. The next nine months to follow is probably what you can expect if you end up going on a hiatus for your comic. And that was also the time for me that I was pregnant with kiddo number two. I'll just read these out in a second here. At the time, I was still trying to post at least one update a month to still be eligible for the Creator Rewards bonus program, which was basically an extra $100 for reaching at least 40,000 page views in a month. It was awesome while it was still around, but like many nice things that came out during the pandemic, it ended in January 2023 and left a lot of comic artists feeling pretty anxious. Yeah, I still miss that thing. That was pretty cool. Oh well. I'll just read the stats out for that time. July 2022, uh, 80 episodes total, 20,412 subscribers, six, yeah, 66,087 page views, and I earned $32.06. August 2022, I had a total of 82 episodes, 20,478 subscribers, so really not a big jump at all there in subscribers, uh, 42,857 page views, and $24.89 in ad revenue. September 2022, I had 84 total episodes, 20,462 subscribers, so it actually dropped that month a little bit, 42,506 page views for the month, and the comic earned $22.90. October 2022, 86 total episodes, 20,434 subscribers, so still starting to fall, or continuing to fall <laughs> in readers. I think a lot of people were starting to drop off after the fireside stories when they realized the comic was going on a hiatus, but I don't know. That's speculation. Could have just been people cleaning out their, uh, reader catalog or something. Uh, monthly page, page views was 32,643 and the comic earned $9.55. November 2022, 90 episodes total, 20,700 subscribers, uh, 67,519 page views and ad revenue jumped up to $22.31 for that month. December 2022, 92 total episodes, 20,774 readers, 41,626 page views, $8.50 on ad revenue. January 2023, no new episodes, literally hovering <laughs> at 92 episodes still, uh, 20,817 new readers, 
total total readers not new readers uh the page views dropped significantly uh down to 16,936 page views but we still managed to get three dollars and 29 cents of ad revenue february 2023 still no new updates so still 92 total episodes uh 20,824 readers so literally only gained like quick math um seven total new readers for that whole month um 10,617 page views and two dollars and 28 cents for that month march 2023 still 92 episodes uh, 20,856 subscribers, 13,608 page views for the month, and $3.01. And I was honestly pretty still surprised that my comic was getting any amount of page views, despite being on hiatus. I think a large part of that was actually this channel. Starting my YouTube channel has actually been probably the best thing I could have done for helping my comic reach a larger audience. And it got me thinking about something that I want to experiment, experiment on. <laughs> and it got me thinking about something I want to experiment on, but I'll tell you about it later in this video. Let's get back to the ad revenue stats. So at this point in the hiatus, I've started trying to get back to posting four times a month, basically once a week again, and was realizing that it's just not working out for me with my current life obligations. New baby, raising a toddler, health problems, family moving to town, a lot of things were up in the air and virtually there was no extra time to dedicate to making my comic. I pivot and opt for posting once a month and shift some of the focus to making more YouTube videos. So you'll see that's pretty much what was reflected in that hiatus there. And then I saw a little spike in April 2023. Page views jumped back up to 112,889 page views and the revenue came in at $28.34. Wait, back up. You got close to the same amount of page views back in June of 2022 for $66, so why is that significantly lower? I honestly have no clue, but I can guess that maybe in the summertime ad rates probably go up again since some people have more leisure time. I'm not really sure, but it does illustrate just how flighty ad revenue can be. It really is feast or famine. So why did Fairy Lantern get so many page views for that month? My guess is that someone over on the Canvas team really likes my comic and wants to see more of it. I hope. A girl can hope, right? <laughs> it got put back on the carousel, and then because it was featured there, it also showed up in the hot series tab. It's been a slow, steady climb since then. I'll read the stats out again since there's not really much else to note during the time. May 2023. 94 episodes, exactly 22,000 new readers, or total, total readers, why do I keep saying new readers? Total readers. Um, 27,549 page views for the month and $8.29 in ad revenue. June 2023, 95 total episodes, 22,285 readers. So it jumped up about, or exactly 285, or yeah, it, it jumped up exactly 285 readers from the previous month. Um, page views totaled at 48,629 for that month and the ad revenue came in at $12.93. July 2023, 78 total episodes, which I'll come back to that in a second. Um, 22,735 readers, 48,730 page views and $7.86 in ad revenue. August 2023, 79 episodes total, uh, 23,121 readers, 42,478 page views, but the ad revenue was $25.57. I definitely think the takeaway here is that growth for smaller comics happens much easier when you have weekly updates. Comics with a significantly larger audience can get away with posting their comic a little less frequently. 
but that wasn't the case for me. (laughs) Getting back to that drop in episodes, I also decided to declutter the main comic and put all of my bonus episodes into its own side comic, with the exception of all the collabs, of course. And I updated the new prologue, part one, and stuck it at the beginning. It was originally living as a bonus episode further into the comic. And finally, I decided to experiment with genres again and put my comic into fantasy. It's not noted, but I think I updated my comic's thumbnail again at this time. The results of doing that in July, they, (laughs) they might have been entirely by coincidence. But ad revenue was better, despite the page views being less. And then, funny enough, in September, Fairy Lantern was put into the fantasy reading list. It wasn't as big of a push as the Fireside Fireside story list, Um, and I think partly that was because there was no coin incentive for original readers to go read Canvas stories this time around. But page views did jump up to about 60,669 page views. That's a spooky number. <laughs> I'm still waiting to see what the ad revenue looks like for that, but you guys, for you guys, it'll literally just be a second or two. There it is. Boom. So there. That's what ad revenue on Webtoon Canvas looks like for a smaller comic. At the time of recording this video, my comic Fairy Lantern is sitting at around 24,000 readers and about 80 episodes. I'm hoping I'll be able to settle into a better comic making rhythm soon now that the baby is older. She's already almost walking, which is nuts. I I, I can't. Good good lord. Um, maybe I'll do an updated day in the life video once the rhythm is better. But also, after seeing the ad revenue break down, this might make you anxious. Like, is it even worth posting my comic here? And for that, I'll say yes. Yes, it is. It is both anxiety inducing and also worth it. But that might be a whole other video since this one is already pretty long. (laughs) You might also be wondering, what was that little thing I wanted to experiment with? Well. What about putting your comic on one of the largest platforms it could possibly be on? YouTube. (laughs) And since YouTube has way more analytical tools at our fingertips, I want to see what the ad revenue looks like for this specific video right here. And if it splashes over to other comic platforms like Webtoon, Tapas, Global Comics, and Namikami. But yeah, so if you want to check it out, it's right up here at the top. I hope this video helped serve you guys, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.